Hi everybody, how are we all? I'm Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench. And here we are now, Thursday the 30th of uh, June already, 2022. And we are watching a premiere of this um, wrestling with this. And this is it here. I reviewed it a couple of weeks ago. It's the Revell 132nd scale F18F Foxtrot from, um, from Revell, Revell Germany. And I did a review of it and got lots of comments about it. it's a bit of a dog. Apparently Phil Flory's had a go at it. Um, I know Clive's having a go at it and everybody says it's a bit of a dog. Tim Borland, uh, Tim Scott Borland's had a go at it. Uh, there's a question at the end of this video for you, Tim, if you want to um, answer it. Um, so but, and anybody that knows the answers to the questions that I ask. So this is not basically a how to. This is not me trying to be the masterful old big god I am. This is just how I see it and how I'm going to tackle it, how I'm going to wrestle with it. As you all know, my engineering background, I love kits that are a dog to build as long as they're not too bad. Mac 2 VC10, for instance. But I, I do enjoy kits that, you know, they're stable plastic, unlike Mac 2, that are made from half decent tooling, unlike Mac 2. Um, but just have issues, you know, issues like bits that don't go together because they need to be sanded back or trimming or whatever. So um, sit back and enjoy. If you haven't seen a premiere before, the way this works, you're watching a completely recorded video. For example, today is Monday, Monday the 27th of June. And no, I haven't got my glasses yet, but they are imminent. Oh, and there's Jess looking out the window. She's just turned around. She's actually just had a bath, so she's a bit wet. Jess, what are we doing? Nah. So anyway, um... So basically, yeah, it's it's a premiere. So what you're seeing is recorded video and basically um, the comments down the side of the, down the right hand side of your screen. I always get the wrong side. I think it's that side, isn't it? The comments down the side of your screen are basically um, live. So if you want to come and say hello, if you want to ask any questions, as long as they're not too deep, because I can't obviously can't spend 20 minutes answering a question during an hour long video. It is about an hour and 10 minutes long. So uh, sit back and enjoy. Uh, and as I say, don't forget to hit the subscribe if you haven't already. And also do me a big favour, hit the like, please, because that's really, really good. Really good. Makes makes a lot of difference. So um, I'll see you all soon and enjoy this video. Bye for now. This is the Revell 132nd scale. FA18F Super Hornet. It's the Foxtrot Twin Seater one. Um, basically, if you're into your Top Gun Maverick and everything, this is where Tom Cruise sat in the back with the cameras on him and made himself look like he was flying, although the pilot was at the front. Uh, something of interest, I have actually discovered that when the Hornet takes off from an aircraft carrier, the pilot does not have his hands on the stick. Um, they hold on to a handle by the... Uh, by the canopy because the actual plane takes off itself so there we go maybe they do cover the stick i don't know but uh yeah basically apparently they have the hand which is probably why you'll notice in you if you've seen top gun maverick when he launches even in the previews when he launches off the aircraft carrier's hands sort of forward and to the right holding they, they hold a, a handle or something which i found absolutely amazing um so anyway the kit um it's not very nice i did a review of it some people refer to it as a dog um, some people have built it and said it's a complete nightmare. Um, I've seen Tim Scott Borland's build of it and looked like he did okay with it. Um, but it is, it's, it's got so much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's going to be very easy to easily and easy cock up and easily make a mess of. Um, a lot of people complain in reviews and stuff about the way Ravel have actually come along and said, you know, you need to remove flash here, you need to remove flash here, remove flash here, remove material here. Um, I actually say hats off to them. Um, yes, they've made a poor quality kit, but the price of it is like half the price of the Trumpeter equivalent kit. The um, flash and everything that's on there, I have seen on other kits and they don't mention it. You know, you, you know we all know the manufacturers who produce shitloads of flash and you, you just got to work with it and carve it off and everything they're actually telling you where to remove material because they know you're going to hit problems if you don't now this area here it says on here about removing half a millimeter from the top of those bulkheads uh, this is the upper half of the fuselage the upper half of the intakes i noticed when i looked at mine i noticed there was quite a big seam line and i think that's what they're referring to because 
I have actually removed that seam line and managed to kind of get it together. Um, if we go through the build, they're telling you to build up the intakes, um, tape it all together, drill a hole there, and there's no actual real position of where the hole's supposed to be. And I've got something in it, which is really annoying. There we go, go away. Um, so we need to, and don't forget to add that part, which is something I would probably do. The, um, yeah, the hole there, there is no real direction about where it goes. So we need to look on further the instructions before we start drilling. And don't forget to put this contraption here. And where is it? This piece here, B5. Don't forget to put that in for the uh, tail planes with those massive connection points, as you can see. What? Pathetic. Um, and then again here, we've got all these bulkheads going in the undercarriage bay, which are going to look lovely rather than just having them molded as sort of flat bulkheads. Um, but they are telling you to drill them and remove flash and everything, which is fine. Uh, but this, I think this is something I think Ravel need to improve on. They do make a lot of fuss about showing us detailed images of where everything goes. Like here, they're showing you the built up model and everything. But here they've got like drill two holes and it's like, where are they? You know, drill this, this hole here. Where is it? It's, um, it's not so clear. Again, we've got remove flash on all these bits. Coming down here, remove flash. And then we're going to fit them all in. They're giving us some colour codes in there for little hydraulic cylinders and everything. If you're going to do this as a nice detailed model, the undercarriage bay could do with some livening up a bit. And then here you've got the option of having the wheels up or down. And then if you remember, I, I talked to my review about removing these hinges and stuff. And then we're going to add the inner sides of the, uh, the outer sides of the undercarriage bays, glue them in, let them dry. It doesn't say to let them dry. In fact, I wouldn't let them dry. I'd try and fit that on before you actually uh, let them dry in case you need any adjustment. Um, and here they're telling you not to cement. So what they're telling you is don't cement that part to the to the actual pivot for the uh, for the tail planes or the elevators, should I say? So basically, then we're going to add the lower section onto the onto the intake assembly with your gear and everything in there. Um, and they're showing you again this detail and you're going to glue those parts back on that you cut off. Yes, I know it's crazy. Add these little fairings in here and then we're going to add the fairing on there and then we're going to come along and add the other side and everything and blah, 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 and add the sides on and seven pieces of tape and all that. And they're showing you here where all the nice joints should be, where it should all line up. And then once you've done all that, we're going to add the uh, lower wing surfaces onto the top of the lower assembly, move a bit of plastic in there again you know I like the fact they're telling us to do that rather than you coming unstuck then we're going to add this um, ECS panel in here which more about that in a minute and then drop the top down on and clamp it in position and everything now when I reviewed this kit I said about um, this is a bit of a weird build sequence I have now dry built the fuselage and here it is um, and as you can see it's a big old beast this is an A3 cutting back here and my fingers are on the ends of it. So you can see it's longer even without the nose than an A3 cutting mount. We haven't put the, tech, the exhaust on yet. So it's a big old bird. Um, so basically I have dry fitted this all together to see how it all goes. And as you can see, it does go together quite nicely. I mean, we've got a, a, a seam there, but there's some cleanup required in those, in those um, flanges where the exhaust go and everything. But we've got a bit of a seam there, you can see. But that's nothing out of the ordinary. We can put some sprugo or filler or whatever in there, put some super glue in there, sand that back and that'll be nice. One thing I do like on this kit that I would credit the designer for, he hasn't put the seams where there's panel lines. So as you can see here, if I can catch it in the light, there is a panel line on there, with a load of rivets. And I think even the Academy kit, they would have a seam in there where you join this piece of plastic. The designer has put the seam diagonally up here. So now what you can do is work on that seam, sand it flat and not lose all your rivet detail. Whereas if the panel, if the actual join was along that seam and it wasn't a perfect fit, which it never will be, then you're going to lose all your rivet detail or have to put it all back in. Whereas with this, you can glue it in place, clamp it all down, tape it in place, sand it, bit of Mr. Surface or whatever in there, sand it flat, job done. And it's the same here. They've put a diagonal seam in there. There is no seam line there. It's just a plastic join. OK, um, the belly pan goes on. It fits lovely onto the bulkheads and everything. You can see I've got the wheel bays in there with no bulkheads or anything in them. But we'll see how that goes. I can see we have potential for issues here where these these inner pieces here will fit. They fit onto the intake. They fit onto the belly of the lower fuselage, the rear half, not the front. And then they actually have a flange on the back end. I'll pull that off so you can see this flange 
on here is designed to step into there but it doesn't fit very well at all okay it doesn't fit in there at all so we're going to need to do some work on that um, and probably I would suggest the best thing is sand the back of this nice and straight and then remove some of that flange in there or it could be that it's this flange in here this one that's running fore and aft is actually pulling it pushing it away but something is stopping it going in in fact I can see that now it is because you've only got where's something to point with here we go here's a knife you can see in here in there doo -doo 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 -doo, you have only got a step of about half a millimeter from this face to there whereas on this part you've got a step in there of probably a millimeter so if you carve away some of that in there or you carve away some of that edge that will probably fit in there beautifully so okay so we've got that far the, the fit on the forward edge of these two parts is lovely so that's good so that's those two parts taken care of most people would actually do a dummy build I'm doing a dummy take apart the other thing I noticed when I actually put the front fuselage halves in you can see that up here in this area the actual nose section butts up against this forward part of the rear fuselage okay so that's button up against there but with that button up against there and with everything clamped up inside and all fitted nicely you can see we've got quite a gap here so what I would suggest is probably removing a little bit of plastic from the front of here to allow the nose to go back a little bit more and then if we have to we may have to remove a little bit from the back of the cockpit or something so that this panel here will go in but obviously I can't fit all that because it's just too much to do because the cockpit isn't one piece it's separate four and a half tubs but I think we need to move this fuselage back a bit because that seam there will be horrible I mean what a nice strong join there as well because you can see there's actually quite a gap there um, so the fuselage actually goes up inside this Sorry, the forward fuselage. Let's remove this. Get off. Right, the forward fuselage, you can see here we've got these tabs on here. They fit up inside. Okay, and you can see there are some recesses in there where they fit. Around that tape, you can see there's a recess and it goes tight up against these sides. So we'll clamp it up against there and everything um, once that's all in. But this, as I say, this is going backwards. The fit here is quite nice, the fit there is quite nice, the fit there is quite nice and obviously when we put all this together we'll have the cockpit in. I'm not sure if you'll be able to drop the cockpit in from the top, may be able to just get it in there, I don't know, no you won't because they have that ledge in the top so you'll have to get the cockpit tab in there, you don't have to put the seats or anything in, but so we'll have to get the cockpit tab in there. With their assembly sequence they're telling you to glue these lower wings onto the lower half of the fuselage and then glue the whole lot into the upper fuselage. I think it makes sense because when we look at the way this goes in these these side panels here get this tape off of here these side panels fit up into recesses in the lower wing okay and I think it would be good to glue the lower wing section into those side panels to get a nice seam and then as soon as you've glued it like use Tammy extra thin nothing quick setting Get it into the upper fuselage and clamped up to make sure you've got your correct position fore and aft. It does actually, the wings do go around those bulkheads so that gives you some positional um, idea. But make sure that you've got that up in there because you can see that when you do it like this, it's very, you can get a gap in there all the way along. Whereas when I push it all together, it does go together very nicely and you get a very nice seam in there that won't need anything doing at all. As long as you don't get any glue oozing out, that'll look bloody lovely with a bit of paint on it. So um, there you go, and you can see the same on this side. It wants to sit there with a gap. This is all flapping about, but it should actually sit up into a recess. So that's that. So we're going to take off these side panels, and then we should be able to see up in that wing. Come here, a bit of tape. I could turn the camera off, but that means more editing, so I'm not going to do it. And then we'll take this piece of tape off at the back here. And this one. There we go. So as I say, I haven't removed any material from those bulkheads other than the 
the bit of uh, seam line that was on there so I'm not sure if I need to do more on there but basically you can see this piece here that is actually going to go up into that recess in the lower wing so the lower wing you can see I can untape it from here like this just like so Do, 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 do. Get this tape out of here, come on, right. And you can see now that, that there has a recess in it and this is going to basically fit into that recess like so. And when these are glued It does go in there because I've had it in there. It's lovely. It's a lovely fit. Um, he says. Right. So that's going to go in there like that. And basically when this is glued to this, you can see these notches here. They give you the position because they wrap around these two bulkheads here. So they give you a four and a half position. You've got these scoops up in here as well. They're going to be visible under here. You can see that one in there. Okay, this is just a hole and they need to be pushed up. You can reach your finger up from inside and push. You can see there and pushing it in so you can glue them in as well after after it's all glued together. So it's going to be a very, very um, tricky little build. It's going to be quite tricky. Now, somebody told me, I can't remember who, I'm sorry. Somebody told me that Mr. Flory built one of these and didn't say he had a nightmare with it, but he said it was a fun build. Um, and apparently there's a big weakness in the undercarriage, which I intend to look at as well with some brass. So we'll have a look at that. Not brass undercarriage, some brass rod. The idea, I would like to put this thing together out of the box with just some minor changes to improve it, such as adding some brass wire into the undercarriage to strengthen it. I've got some resin wheels for it. I've got some resin exhausts if they're fit because they're designed for the trumpeter kit. And uh, I've also got the um, 3D instrument panel set for it. So, and I've also got resin ECS controls. So you can see how this is going together. And you can see that with just that um, bit of tape on the, on the back and that rubber band, it's all staying together very, very nicely. You see these bulkheads have positions where they go in. This is all floppy. I've also noticed, you can see down in here, actually we'll take, we'll take it apart, let's take it apart, as I say we're doing this all backwards, so we can take the bottom off, this to one side, and then we can take that out of there, and this is where they're telling you to remove, you can see I've still got a bit of a seam line on that one actually, I thought it sanded it all the way, but there's still a bit of a seam line there. And I've got a feeling that's what they're referring to with half a millimetre because it seems to fit together quite nice without worrying about it. So with just a coarse stick I could come along and take, take material out of there just like so. Now the other thing I want to do, as you can see, we've got the intakes in there and you can see up in there. You could see up in there if I had some better light. Uh, the intakes are there. You can see I've got the intakes in there. You can see here they are here. But you can't see in there because the, the light is in this end and you can't see any. There you go. There you go. You can just see them in there now. Okay. So you can actually see them through the built model because they're going to be painted all bright and everything. Now, I love getting in jet intakes nice. But the trouble is here, you're going to paint those up all nice. Glue all this together. Deal with the seam. How on earth are you going to paint the intakes? So my intention is... Is to build this up together okay and get it sort of glued up sort of up to all this and just up to here and then cut through the middle here cut through there okay I intend to cut through there right through the middle so I end up with two halves and because I've cut through the middle of there what I will end up with is kind of half a cup so I'll now have the front intake okay that back piece will be separate I'll get into there you can see I've done the ejector pin marks 
I'll be able to get into there, okay, and deal with the seams. And then once it's all painted nice and everything, glue these in from behind and then glue this back part back on. Okay, perhaps measure the width of the blade and put a piece of plastic card in to take up wherever the cut is. But the thing is, if I glue it together and then cut it apart, then I know I'll have a nice seam to go back together. And these are a very snug fit in these recesses. Make sure you get it the right way round. They're a very snug fit in there. So it should locate all back together beautifully. So that's my plan and I'll show you that when I do it. Right, so. Lots and lots of work to do on this piece. This is your upper fuselage half. Get a video you want to watch. Get some music on, whatever. Get your sanding sticks out. Get your felt pen out. There are stepped mould lines running all the way down here. Okay, all the way down there. And then they come off down about around here. And you've got the same on both sides. There is a mould line that runs along here. Up there. Along there. Right across here. And then I can't quite see where it finishes. It probably just ends here or something. But it maybe ends on that seam line. But basically, when you feel your model, you will feel steps all the way along here. And you can see I've got some Mr. Surfacer in there because there was quite a step. What I did was brush, I've got a magic marker. I'm going to show you how I do this in a minute because on the lower section, we've got the same thing. So what I do is get some magic marker and then sand it nice and flat using a hard stick. Don't come in there with sponges and stuff. Bear in mind guys this video is for the newbies. Don't come in there with sponges and stuff. Just get something hard. Okay, something like this. This is a 400 grit uh, Matador Infini stick. Absolutely brilliant. If you don't want to run to the expense of proper standing sticks, you can get these nail files from supermarkets and they're hard and usually they're slightly concave on one side and convex on the other. Make sure you use the convex and then just sand over, okay, until you see you're almost, almost got both sides level. When it starts off, you've got quite a step. As I say, I'm going to show you this in a minute. And then wherever you've got a step that you know that if you just keep sanding, you're going to change the profile, then basically you need to get some Mr. Surfacer or something and paint it in there and then sand it flat. You can get some thick paint in there, leave it for a couple of days to go hard and then sand it flat. When it comes to getting into corners like this, or into the radius, what I did, I got my X-Acto knife, okay, the Acto handle that, wrap some um, wet and dry around it, use something, you know, 200 grit, whatever, 240 grit, and just sand in there so you keep that radius going. Otherwise, if you use your finger, you're likely to get a bigger radius, you're going to get a difference going between here and here. And you can just get in there and just sand that like that, okay with your paper wrapped around there and you'll keep a nice constant radius around there. If you don't keep it absolutely perfect, don't worry, it's going to be painted matte grey, you're not going to see it. Okay. Another problem with the back end of this aircraft is the panel. I'll show you in the instructions because I packed mine about. Uh, this panel, where are we? Do, 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 do. This panel here, part B39. Okay, this is the ECS. This is the late pipe, and these are the ACS pipes. And they're molded in one, and they're not very nice. If you have a look in my review, you'll see them. They're not very nice at all. Um, and here is the part. In fact, I think I've got a photograph of it. I'll put it now. I've actually modified this part because I have the quick boost. I've got the quick boost, and I have, rather than buy another set, I made a simple mold, and I've just made these for myself. Please don't ask me to supply these to you because... They are a resin part that a manufacturer has designed and made, and I am not going to go and steal their design. I, the reason I've done it for myself is absolutely fine, but I will not make these for anyone else. And then what I've done is I've cut the... Basically, this part comes with these bits moulded on. And what I've done is cut that out to make this fit. Okay, and you can see on there, you may be able to see... I don't know if I can get it like... There is a circular moulding on there. And basically, I've got that to go in there. This piece of plastic card here is just to support it when I cut the holes out. Because as you can see at the back, the section of grey plastic is very thin and it would have just snapped if I didn't support it. So what I've done is cut that out. The other thing is, these panels, you can see they're moulded with a very thin edge. You can get them from Hannah's, so they're only about three quid. And they're really nice ECS panels for the, for the trumpeter kit. 
and I've got them fitting in there and in real life they actually sit proud of the surface they're actually bolted on rather than fitted flush now the other thing I noticed this is you get two types of these this is the early type and this is the late type and you can see on here when you actually fit this onto your model that is what you'll get underneath okay so this is the early type ECS and this is the late type ECS okay so even if you've got a pre-block 26 apparently a lot of the pre-block 26 have been updated to this now so I was just going to use this but I've noticed that the detail on this one you can see on here you've just got a simple circular grill molded on I don't even know if you can see it in fact I'm looking at the, the, the screen which is three four feet away from me and I can't see but I can see that on here the detail on that circular grill is so much nicer I'm not going to use this I'm going to use this which is great because it gives me the opportunity to show you what I had to do if you look at on here there is in this area here it sort of flares up to blend into this spine here and this area here needs to be ground away to make it fit now you'll notice on here I've got this so I push it in and it fits beautifully okay it fits in there really nice and flush and what I've done I've gone around you can see I've got some plastic card strip there that's 10,000 strip there 10,000 strip there and I've got 20,000 strip down the sides and then sanded it to fit and I've also had to come in with a file and file away some material here now I'll show you now the way this fits and I'm going to use my glass file again because I've just noticed I've got a sprue nib still on there so these glass files are brilliant for this I've said it a million times because they only remove the nib they don't really take anything else off which just makes them absolutely wonderful we've got some sprue nibs there so we'll take that off of there and we'll take that off of there and we'll just make sure we've got no edge sticking up there we are so now this you can see this fits exactly the same as that fitted so whichever one you're going to use you can see that when it goes in oh my god look at it all it's all sticking up on the corners it's it's sticking up at the back actually this one is better than that one but you can also see that this area in here is being held down because this piece of plastic in the middle is fouling on here so what we need to do is come along with a file and remove plastic from here because you can see what they've done I don't know if you can see it but they've actually got this plastic here stepping up okay it needs to be sanded flat because this here is wider than the recesses in there rather than go trying to sand all this out here and make this weak it's easier to just remove the material from there and then get it so it fits nice and flush and what we'll do we'll put some plastic card around the edge same as it on that one and get it to fit nice and flush then I can remove all this surface detail except for those grills and then I can you can see that this is the same shape okay so that's the back that's the front that's the same shape and I'm just going to cut these holes out to make these fit into there just like they fit into that one and you can see you've got these circular cutouts on the front of the resin panel they fit around that circular grill there so that is the plan this hole I will measure it for you I've got my calipers here digital calipers this hole is 15.3 by 19.8 19.5 yeah it's about 15 and a half mil wide by sort of 19 and a half 20 mil long 19 and a half or something if you measure the block on the back that'll tell you what size it all needs to be you see that's 19 there so I've actually gone a bit too big so I can do the next one better and it's 15 get down on the part it's actually 14.5 wide so I could go a bit narrower as well so there we are so cut that out get those parts to fit and then we can super glue them in the other reason I've done this again kudos to the designer they've actually got this this seam except for that line there the rest of it is not a panel line so you can again sand it fill it sand it get it nice and flat nice and flush scribe your line back in there across there for that panel line the rest of this all needs to be flush 
So that's really, really good. Great design. I much prefer that to having where they try to make the, the panel line the seam line and it just ends up making a mess and it always looks horrible however bloody careful you try so I like to do it like this it's much easier um, it's like I've often shown you on, on the Vulcan when I glued the nose section on the Airfix did that they did it where there's a panel line so what I did was filled it got it all nice and smooth and then moved over like a millimeter away from the seam I've scribed a fresh line in the plastic rather than try and make a join look like a panel line because a panel line is perfectly parallel, it's perfectly square, it's it's you know it's perfectly straight, everything. So um kudos to the guy that designed this. Brilliant, thank you for that. And uh, so there we go. Um and from what I've seen and what you've just seen me do, I think we could get a pretty good looking model out of this. Um, I think its big let, biggest letdown is going to be the undercarriage, but uh, I reckon we can get a pretty good looking model out of this. And what I want to do now is show you how I dealt with those seam lines down here. Let's get rid of all this. You can see on here, what we've got is where the, they've, they've got the mould tool coming in here so they can have that detail. And then they've slide moulded it so you can get the detail around the sides. Thank you, Ravel. It's nice of you. But they've got a bit of a funny lump going on here. Now, there's no panel line there. But you can see here, if I can catch it in the light, there is a lump. OK, now you could just come in there and start sanding it. But the trouble if you do that, you don't know where you're going. You need a guide. So I'm going to grab a magic marker. And this one is a fine. I need a medium. If I wanted a medium, a fine, you can guarantee I would pick up a medium. Here we go. So I'm just going to come along there and magic marker over where that where that line is. Okay, so we've got a mold seam there. I can't see anything else here, so it's just going to be that one there. So I'm glad I've got at least this one to show you what I did. I did it all, and I wasn't going to bother video. And I thought, well, there's probably a lot of youngsters out there or newbies that might want to see this so I'll do this because there may be people out there that don't want to run to the expense of proper sticks I can use this um, supermarket stick and come along and you can see as soon as I start sanding and this is why you want something hard who misses not a sponge you can see where it's taking the material away because it's taking away the magic marker and it's leaving the line you can see that tight black line in there and that's where the seam is. So I can just come in and keep sanding. You can see we've also got a bit of a low, a high spot there. We've got a bit of a lump. So I can just keep sanding. And I want to make sure I don't come up onto these detail here. You've got the rivet detail, and panel line detail. I'm not going to be able to avoid going over there because it's right on it. But here, it's a good few millimetres away. So I can come in. Okay. And that's how you can do it with that. Now, as I say, you've got one side is slightly concave. One side is slightly convex. Make sure you get the right side. You don't want to use the con, the concave side, otherwise you just end up sanding on the edges. Now I'm going to move back because this is my model. I'm going to go to this 600 grit Infinity Matador sander. And you can see I'm just removing plastic until the black lines all but disappear. There we go, and we've removed that horrible wavy ridge from that area now. And then we can take, I could use a glass file and just polish the area up. You can see it will make it all shiny. See there, it's all starting to shine now. And I can see here I've still got some of the ridge, so I can grab the pen again. Just go over that area. Let the ink dry out or clog your stick up. And then you can see as soon as I start sanding, you can see where that ridge is. I'm just going to keep sanding. I'm not putting any pressure on it and the stick do the work. Okay, and I can still see we've got a bit of a step there. Just in there. So I'm just going to come along with the pen and then... You can see as soon as I start sanding, we end up with a sharp line, and that's where you see now you can see the edge of that lump. So I'm going to keep sanding until that lump 
blends into the plastic around it. And there we go. And now you can come along with a sponge. This is a thousand grit sponge. Just polish it all up. Just make sure we haven't got any flat spots on there. And you can see now what we've done. We've removed that bump, but we've still got all our panel line detail in there. That you can see it, but there is there is panel line detail, river detail still there, and there's that little tiny lump, whatever that is, that little cutout in there is still there, and we've got a nice smooth radius on the bottom compared to that. And if you just want to see that again, you can see here if I can get it to reflect in the ink, you see there's a there's a sharp mold line there. As soon as I touch it. You can see that sharp line and that's what I want to remove without wrecking the rest of the plastic. And this applies to a lot of kits, especially trumpeter kits. They use a lot of slime molding technology and they often get these horrible mould lines and I think these days they've kind of moved away from it a bit but they used to concentrate on putting these bloody mould lines on a seam line and it always meant rework and riveting and scribing and god knows what whereas if they do it like Ravel have done it here it's a lot better for the modeler so I hear a lot of talk about the apparently the bloke that designed this has been sacked from Ravel but he got one thing right I can tell you and he kept all these horrible mould lines away from the seam lines and he's kept all the join lines as well the glued join lines and then we can come in with a scriber like that just with a pin like that or we can grab one of our new mr scriber from the mrp range and just come along and follow along that line just like so and just make sure we've got that line clean and not got any swarf or anything in it or any sanding dust or whatever the same on this end come along follow that line you want a good scriber that follows a line these these are pretty good for that okay so there we go whoops came out the line there and i came out of line again so this is obviously a very narrow line but the scriber doesn't want to follow it's one of the problems with this kit that the, some of the panel and surface detail is very soft and in other areas it's very nice. So it's a bit inconsistent but hey ho. It's all going to be grey anyway. So there we are. All our panel lines all dealt with. I didn't do those vertical ones did I? And there we are. So that's how we deal with those mould seams. And I can see I've still got a bump on there, so it's going to get some more sand in now. But uh, there we are. Right, so to use this, um, the first thing I've got to do is file some plastic off of there, which I've actually done with my little glass files. And basically what we've done is just lower it down, because this section here, as I said before, this section in the middle is kind of ramped up to fit into that groove there but unfortunately this area here is too wide so it's best just to, to file it down and get it to fit uh, as flush as you can now this area here at the front of this panel is the only place as i said where you've got a, um, a panel a panel line so you don't really want to be going too mad with it but you do want to get it as flush as you can now and the reason for using these resin parts is the fact that because this is going to go in, I'll glue this in first and then it will be nice and flat and then I can just sand it all and blend it all in and get it nice and flat and flush and then plonk those in afterwards. But obviously we don't want it sitting like it is now. We could easily say, well let's leave it like that and then just sand it flush. The trouble with that is um, you're going to remove all this detail and that's why I'm using this panel because it's got this lovely detail here on this, um, this panel at the back. So what we need to do is look at how much we need to add. Now the other thing that's a bit 
errorsome, if you like, if that's a word. This here kind of comes along and then radiuses down into the engine cover. However, this panel here is flat. So we do need to do a little bit of work to get that to go down in. So what I'm going to do is get it to sit flush with most of the face and then just blend it in after it's glued in. And I can take my caliper and I can see from my caliper how much it's sitting high. And I think if it's the same as the other one, it's going to be about... No, it's not a millimetre, Nigel. <laughs> the other one was about... It's 0.38, so it's a little bit more than the other one was. So I'm going to put some 10 thou plastic card across the back and see how it looks. So I've got some 10 thou here and some 20 thou. I've got a piece of millimetre thick here that I'm going to glue across the back like I've done there. Uh, so all we need to do is get a, um, a, a sort of narrow strip cut of the 10 thou card. So never try and cut it, just score it and it will come. And then what we're going to do is glue that into there. So what I'm going to do is cut that off. There's no point having it across the middle. So I'm going to cut that off there. And then hopefully this piece here, which is just fallen into a little corner that I can't come here. And then that piece there is going to go into there. So what we can do, we need to be careful of capillary action here because the glue will happily run under your thumb or your finger or whatever, so be very careful. You're just going to put a tiny drop in there and move a thumb quickly and that will just be enough just to make that bite. And then we can brush some in along the edge and let the capillary action take it in. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the rule just to make sure it's down and then we can use our snips just to cut the end like that and then we can do the same on the other side if you don't have any plastic card uh, you can get some from like Amazon or eBay or whatever but just make sure you get styrene there are people that will advertise especially on Amazon I've seen it they will advertise plastic sheet as styrene and it's not it's uh, polycarbonate and it's no use whatsoever for this kind of thing you want styrene polycarbonate won't glue with these glues so there we go so we can now put that in the back of there and see how it looks we've already got the front nice and flush and you can see now straight away if I hold that up to the camera, you can see that we've got a nice, pretty flush outer edge. The inner edge, as we know, is sticking out, but that's because the top is curved and the panel is flat. So we can blend that in on that corner, but the rest of the panel is nice and flat. So we're going to do the same thing again on the sides and add some plastic card in there. And this time I'm going to use a bit of 20 thou and possibly sand it back because I've got our feeling that if I push this corner up, oh no, that's about 10. You can put the card on there and feel. Maybe it does need, maybe it needs a piece of 20 at the top. So what I'm gonna do is just come along here again with my knife. Just take a piece off, cut it roughly in half, like so. And then do the same as I did just now. We'll put that like that on the top edge. Be very, very careful guys with the glue capillary under your fingers. It will ruin your day. And we can put this piece here. In here. Like so, if you're quick, you'd be okay. Just nudge that into the corner nice and tight. Just get some glue in there. 
and that's that and then when we put this in here we should see that we are pretty much flush I just want to um, if the glue has gone off enough I just want to sand that down because it's sticking out a bit further than the recess in the under, underside of the fuselage would allow Go, so that'll go up in there like that. And now we can see we have got pretty much there we are, we have pretty much got a flush fitting panel. Obviously, I've got to do a little bit of sanding, a bit of, bit of jiggery pokery, get it to go nice, and then we'll glue it in and it will be lovely. And there we go. As you can see, I've cut the holes out, so they're going to fit in nicely. Basically, with these, um, with the early panel, if you're going to use the early panel, um, which I would recommend you do if you're going to get these resin parts, the back edge is basically where the panel comes. There's a panel line there. You can cut that out. I don't know if you can see it on there, but there is, there is basically a panel line there. You come back to that panel line. You basically come down the panel line down the inside, and on the outside edge, you say just inside the panel line. So, um... Works out really, really well, and then they fit in there a treat. And in case you've missed the point, the, the whole reason for me doing this is basically the fact I need to square that one up a bit. I need to take a bit more out of that side. Just want to take a bit more out of there just to allow this one to square itself up. That's better. So it can all be darked out with once it's glued in. But basically now we've got that like that um, with the with our spaces all the way around so that it fits nice and flush. We've got those fitting in there. So what we can do now is take these off, put them to one side, and then we can fit this in here, like so, and we can sort of clamp it all in position and push it up, super glue it, tack it, whatever. And then once it's all in position, we can just sand these little these little nubbins off here, these raised areas, and then go around with Mr. Surface around the edges and fill in these panel lines here, which we don't want anymore because they're not correct, uh, and then um, and then go from there. Uh, and obviously we'll have to scribe or just Mr. Surface here with you know with alcohol or whatever uh, to get our panel line across here. But all down here, all across there, all up there, we don't want any line showing at all. So um, that is my next step now: is to glue this into the upper fuselage. So what I think I'll do is tack it in with some super glue and then I think I'll weld it. In fact, I think I'll take this off. No, no I'll leave that on and cut it off after because it's holding it all in position. The trouble is once you take this off, you've got this tiny little thin slither of plastic across here. It's all going to be all deformed and then you'll lose your shape and your squareness and everything. So I would recommend leaving that on. And that one there just keeps wanting to clip back out. So I'm just going to, with a file, just take a little touch out of there. Just see. There we go, it stays in there. Now. Look, it's all it takes, it's just a little touch. And these areas here, I mean, what you can do just before we put them in, we could just knock the, knock the corners off just before we start. Just give us a bit of a head start. Get a bit of an easier blend down there. But um, there we go. So happy with how that's all come out. I'm just going to take a little bit more off of there. Just to kind of blend this in. And we have to be careful not to lose any of that detail from that radial, that circular grill. But you can see already we've got a much better blend in there now, much better fit. So I think what I'll do is tack it in with some super glue and then go around with some extra thin, let it dry and then we'll get some Mr. Surfacer in there tomorrow and sand it back. Right, moving forward, next day now, and as you can see here we've got the jet pipes and everything all glued together, or the intake should I say, and I've also <coughs> separated them. So as you can see here I've cut through. Now when you actually look at your kit there is a flange on the front of here that butts up 
to the back of here. And what I've done is gone round with a saw blade and I have, this is basically a JLC, where's my JLC saw, there you are. This is a JLC saw, okay, take a broken blade, glue it with super glue to a block of plastic and then you can use it like a flush, it's great for removing things when you're removing flush the surface. If you look at my channel you'll see me use it loads of times. And basically you can just cut around and that's what I've done. And the, the blade is about 0.2 thick, so I've put some 10 thou plastic card on the front here. As you'll see, cut it in half so I can still get these apart if I want to use the plastic parts. I do have resin jet pipes that I may well use, we shall see. Um, so basically that will be now glue back onto there when I need to, uh, when I've got the intakes in. Because what I can do now is work on those intakes, get them all nice and smooth, get the seam all dealt with. And then once that is done, with these... Um, uh, compressor or whatever um, stator front blades here I can glue these in like so it does go in there we go I can glue those in like that and now we've got our intakes in there you can see down in through there you can see we've got our intakes they'll be all lovely in silver and then these here can be painted black so that when they go over there it makes it so it's just looking like you're looking at the blades and then behind it you'll see the matte black. So that's the plan there. And what I need to do, what I've done, the reason I've cut them there rather than here, is you've got this main bulkhead here is what decides the position of this fore and aft. And it's going to slot into there, into that groove in the bottom there, in the base plate. I need to thin this down a bit, I think I just need to make it a bit thinner so locates a bit nicer in that groove but basically that's going to sit in there like that and then these jet pipes here they go in with the ECS on the top that's also got a groove that it goes into in the bottom and we know that the jet pipes at the back have to sit down into the fuselage so we bring that up glue them together and we're back to square one but also what this does this allows me to get the position of the undercarriage bay correct as well because obviously we've now got all this movement to get there so what we'll be doing is lots more dry building and <clears throat> checking that as we go forward that as we add these bulkheads into the undercarriage bay that we're actually keeping this relationship with the fuselage correct because obviously if we start to lose that then we start to lose lose our uh, good form with the intakes so it's all going to be a bit of jiggery pokery I've also glued this plate in, missed a surface around the edge, and then sanded it flat. You can see I've ballsed up on this one a bit. I've gone a little bit low, so as I had to sand it flat. It doesn't really matter. I've also got the tail planes here, um, which I'm going to make fit really, really nice. Um, I've heard complaints about them being an awful fit, but straight away, I did notice there is a, you can see there and there, and also here. I did notice there was a mould seam and basically this mould seam here comes along and down. So I've blended all that out which could be a reason why people complain about the fit of the tailplanes. But what I have found, not the tailplane sorry the fins or vertical stabilizers. Uh, these there is a step, you can see it better there. You can see as we come along here it goes straight and then it steps up use the pointed knife you can see it steps up there and it's check my references because if that step isn't supposed to be there you've got it on all four halves we're going to put some plastic card in there to fill the gap because what happens is when we put this in you can see that from here you can see it's fitting quite nice to the side of the fuselage but we've got a great big gap at the front yeah and then the same when we turn it over on the inside face You've got the same, you've got a great big gap at the front. Have I got the right side there? Yes, I have. So we need to play with that and get that good because basically, you know, it fits okay from that step backwards. But when you actually look at it from that step forwards, it looks terrible. There's a great big gap there. I'm not sure maybe that gap is supposed to be there, but we shall check our references and see. So that's all done. That's all blended out. And as you can see now, when I fit these resin... ECS pipes in the hole, they fit beautifully and there you go, it's a massive improvement over the plastic kit parts, 
that's point one. Point two, it's enabled us to get these panels in, get them fitted up and sanded out and blended in and everything. So that's point two. And point three, it means we can add these afterwards so we can get that all sanded out, get it all smooth, do the scribing. We've got a line to scribe across here, um, which I'm going to do. And also uh, it enables us to get all these areas scribed and riveted and everything without having these fragile parts in the way. And we can just, the last thing we do before we plonk the fuselage top onto the base is we can glue those in just like so. Now one thing we are going to have to do on the back of here there's a bit of a resin lump as you can see and the way this kit is designed basically that jet pipe fits in there like that and as you can see these control systems are there okay so basically we need to hack all that off of there to allow this resin lump to go down in because as you can see if I try and put that in there it won't go in obviously because that's in the way Okay, the other thing I've looked at, if you remember in the beginning of the instructions, it shows us, do, 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 wait back in the beginning, it shows us that we should remove two millimetres from here, where my thumb is, but what I found is when you put this in place, inside the fuselage, which is roughly sort of there, okay, sorry, roughly there, like that, that's roughly where it's going to go, that notch, let's get my notches out of the way, that notch is there for the tailplanes to go into, but I think the other one would be easier because I'm right handed, the, the tailplanes fit in there fine, so you don't need to cut anything out of there, that's the notch there they're talking about, these here, so I don't think you need to cut anything because they go in there absolutely fine. So, I don't know if it's the time to really flash or what. It's the same with this half a millimetre on the top. I'm not sure it needs to be done. So, anyway, the next thing to do now is we can put this to one side to go hard and then we can give that a, a guide coat where we'll spray it with a, um, a different colour primer and then we can sand it and see where we are. And then we can do some rescribing. Uh, no point in rescribing until we know where we are with it all. Uh, and then... Um, that's the upper, case, upper half taken care of. I also found a couple of sink marks. There's one here and there's one here. You can see I put Mr. Surfacer in there. And just blended them out. So um, that's all good. Uh, that we don't need to do anything with at the moment. This we need to deal with our seams. And that's nothing to do with that at the moment. So we need to now look at getting our undercarriage bay built up into here. And check that it's all going to fit into this lower fuselage well. Get a nice um, nice view of how it's all going to go. And then go from there. I've also noticed, if you look here. You can see here we have a hole. Hole, hole. You can see here, there is a... It's like the pin is broken off in the mould tool. So basically what you've got is the male of the hole, if you like. So basically what you've got is a raised lump where the pin is broken off. So what we need to do is find the centre of that, drill it out, or what we can do is just carve away that and cut the pin off the bulkhead that goes in there because we've got a groove for it to go in. So we'll have a look at that when we get the bulkheads out. What I want to do now is look at these bulkheads because, as we saw in the instructions before, God, this manual is so thick, we have got some work to do here. It's telling us to draw some holes, which is clear as mud. It's telling us to remove flash. And then it's telling us here to remove flash on all these, remove flash on all these before we put it all together. So um, that's what I'm going to do. And get the I'll get the parts off the sprue now and we'll have a look at them. Right, so I've got the R sprue here, what's left of it. And you can see on here, there's R9 and they're telling us to remove flash from this area, which is here. And they're telling us to drill 2.5mm holes. Sorry, two off 0.5mm holes. And those holes are already there, you can see them. You can see them there, absolutely fine. Fine. So I think the flash they're trying to remove is the sprue nibs, which you would do anyway. And then going over the page, come here. Right, going over the page, we have. Sorry, this has messed up the white balance, guys. I know. We have seven. So that's our nine again. And once again, they're telling us to remove sprue nibs from in here, which we've already done. Our eight, which is this one here. They're telling us to remove flash in here. 
there's nothing to remove. That symbol, was it remove flash? It was, wasn't it? I don't think they show it in the front of the book because it's too embarrassing. Yeah, that symbol is remove flash. So they're telling us to remove flash from there and there's nothing there. Then we come down to number seven, which is here. And they're telling us to remove flash. It's basically removing sprue nibs, I think. So, you know, a lot of the talk I've heard of people reviewing this kit say, oh, look at this blank around and bloody remove flash and everything. There's no flash on here. Um, it's just, I think this is just like, you know, when you get a Tamiya kit, they will tell you to you know there'll be a picture there and then there's a you know like like one of these things here this is an ejector tab one of those there and they'll tell you in the instructions to remove it and that's all they're doing so a lot of the talk about you know all this bloody flash removal those parts you can see if I get this white balance messer up out of the way you can see they're lovely they're molded really really clean nothing wrong with them at all so there's a tiny bit of flash there so look at all the fuss is about so anyway we can get these off now get them cleaned up and we'll see how it all goes together so we've got our carriage bay bulkheads off now um as i say in the instructions they tell you to remove flash and everything from these areas down in here and there really is no flash to remove it's sprue nibs what I did find on a couple of the parts, and I'll use this as a pointer, in this area here, you may just want to sand a little bit of material away. When you fit them in, I'll use this one here because it's big and solid. When you fit them in, you will see they go down into the well, like that. And those areas down in there, it's like the, the bulkhead here is slightly too wide. So have a look at that and just sand a bit away. The other thing I've done, I've gone in, you can see in the bottom here, there are cutouts in these shapes here. There's a cutout and there's a tab on the bottom of the bulkhead there. You see there's a tab on there and that fits in. And I think that's their engineering way of making sure you can't go wrong because they're narrow and wide and they change sides and everything. Um, and it means you can't put the bulkhead in the wrong way around. So basically what I've done is just come in with a a round edge blade and just literally taken away some of that tab a little tiny just like half a millimeter just from either side and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room just to get it to go in um the other thing i found with this one it was slightly too wide to fit nicely into the gap they give you so i just literally just came along with a knife and scraped scraped some of the thickness away there Okay, and that'll allow it to sit down in that groove a lot nicer. So you can see the fit there is really nice. Okay, um, also that one there, I drilled that hole that was blocked up. If you remember that pin was broken off. So I drilled that hole. And as you can see now, the fit on that one is really nice. Next one along, have a look at your instructions. It will show you the direction. Now this one here is symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. But you can see that on the bottom, this tab... That slot in that square is forward so we need to get that tab on there see that tab by my thumb that needs to face forwards so that one's going to sit in in there like that it's be very difficult to dry build you can see once clamped that's going to have a nice nice look to it and we've got these here and I need to be really careful with these they've got these actuators and although the instructions tell you to remove flash here, mine were absolutely plastered in flash up around here. And I managed to break one of these off. So I've actually put a piece of brass wire inside it and glued it back on. Um, but they basically are going to go in like this. So that's going to fit in there. Sorry, that's the wrong way round. That's going to fit in there like so. Okay, again you can see it's a lovely fit and then this one is going to go in front of it like so and as you can see really awkward to draw build on camera guys but that's basically going to butt up against that one you know with a strong member in the middle 
and then the next one and the next one and the next one so you finally get to this one at the end which is at the forward end and that's just going to slot in just like so let's get rid of those and that one's just going to slot in just like that in there job done okay so it's it's all it all goes lovely and then what we'll do when we um in fact we could probably do that now see if we can get this to dry fit into the base of the fuselage that doesn't want to stay there that one I think maybe this one's got the same issue as the rear one in that it's too let's get those out of the way and then it's too thick says as it falls out but um basically we've got the lower end of the fuselage here now so if I put this bulkhead in here which I don't think is going to work to be honest because it just doesn't want to stay there no it won't stay there on its own I think that should no it's not going to work it's going to have to be glued that in there and then that bulkhead is going to fit in there like so there we go so it does all fit it's very nice actually very very nice indeed so um there we go and with that like that what we should find is when we put this rear piece in with the jet pipes in their locations you can see there we go it all joins up so there we go this bit here for those that are worried about it this bit here doesn't matter at all you've got your intakes there you've got your exhaust going in here this bit here is doing nothing okay you could cut these off um, I'm not because I want to show you how to put it together with them if you want to use them but um, you could actually cut them off. They're doing absolutely nothing other than supporting these, which you can't see with the later ECS pipes in there anyway. So I was going to go on and glue all this and build up this um, gear bay, but I'm thinking it wouldn't be a good idea because I need to get in here and do a lot of sanding. Grab a pen, go in there and push my intakes out. There we go. Um, I'm going to get in here and do a lot of sanding and get the uh, the intakes all nicely done and then look at how we're going to paint those. It's going to be a bit awkward because when it comes to fitting the front fuselage in, all this area here, we've got a lot of filling and blending to do so I don't know how I'm going to, quite how I'm going to go about that but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But um, my main concern is getting all these seams all dealt with and getting these all painted up lovely in a nice glossy white. The other thing is I've looked at a couple of pictures, you can see these two squares here. Um, they actually line up with these two hexagonal holes here, or hexagonal square panels, and I believe they are auxiliary intakes, um, so the engine can draw in more when it's on the ground. Um, and one of the pictures I saw had them appearing as a sort of square cutout in the top of the intake, and another one I saw didn't have it, so I can only assume that on the bottom of these hexagonal panels there's like a shoe that goes down and when they're down it obviously flushes that up so I won't bother cutting those out I was going to cut them out but I won't bother and at the end of the day when you're looking right up in there you're not really going to see them anyway so um there we are so that's that um I need to get these bulkheads bagged up so they don't get damaged and then we'll uh, look at gluing them up later after I've done all these seams Right, moving forward, so I've put some Mr. Surfacer in these seams, I've been around and sanded it once. All I do to get the, I won't do it now because the Mr. Surfacer is wet, I get some old emery here, this is 240 grit, roll it into a roll, just shove it down in there and, and turn it, that's, as I say, that's still wet, so that will give you a nice round intake. Uh, there are loads of ways you can do that, you can get a piece of aluminium bar, put a slot in it, Put a piece of emery in there and zzz, in, in and out make it like a flat wheel you can actually buy round flat wheels to get in there so lots and lots of different ways to do it all i say is if you're using power tools 
be very careful because if you start making heat you'll start getting distortion and if you start getting heat into this area here and it's thin you'll lose the shape of your wheel bay and that'll give you all sorts of nightmares so best um be careful i like to i like to try and do things manually if i can these areas in here i think the fit is actually that these are actually very nice intakes um i think the fit in here what we'll do is we'll get some alcohol mr servicer uh, sorry mr mr cut eleven thinners on a cotton bud and just go in those corners and just remove the outer edges of the I put a heavy coat of mr servicer in there so that when i put the, the cotton bud in there it just sort of feathers the edges out so you get a nice radius seam when we come to fit these um it's hard to see which is which they go that way round. so that is that one nope that is that one um you can see that the fit in there isn't bad at all we've got that fitting in there and then that fits up right there there are two there's like these plastic lugs here with pins in i've cut those back because they were fouling on there so you should be able to see where they were fouling you can see in there where it was fouled it's just cut that back so it's not touching it anymore and also as I set up here the issue with the fit in there was quite a problem so if that got that to fit in there what I've done is just literally with the glass file just taken the end off and cleaned it up make it a sharp line um, what I found was in here this section of plastic here there is too thick so literally just come in with a knife and scrape away some plastic material in there to get rid of the thickness and then that will go in there like that just like so so there you are um so that's that dealt with what's the other thing i was going to look at here when i said about these side panels going into the wrong one going into this lower wing section it's hard to determine what position it needs to be in. If you put this lower wing into the upper, you will see that basically the rear end of that point is level with where this steps up. And if you look on the side panel here, there is a step there where it steps up. Okay. So what we're going to do, just notice it's got a bit of a funny shape there, just going to take that off. So what we're going to do is get this to fit into here and now we know the position because that step is level with the end of that point. But as we can see it won't go in, it's too, this is too thick to fit in that gap. So what we're going to do, we can either come in with a really coarse sanding stick and remove some material like so okay that's going to give you like a wedge effect Let's see if we can start to get it to have a look and go in it's still not in so what the easiest the best thing to do I think is get a knife and scrape along and just thin out that edge So that it actually slots up in because if it doesn't go up in you are never going to get a nice fit on the rest of it so you can see now oops, that is going into there at the back edge but it's not going in forwards because i haven't thinned it all out basically what we want to do is get that to slot up in there with a nice snug fit we don't want it too thin I believe this front edge is actually okay. I believe that goes in. Let's have a look. And there we go. It's going in all the way down now. We get a nice snug fit. You get a lovely join in your inner wing and under wing there. And so that's nice. that's all good so when we come to do that that will be all fitting lovely I'm just going to remove a little bit from there just to make it go in a bit easier so you level up the back edge with that point 
slide it all together and in we go. And there we are. So now we can see we've got a lovely joint as opposed to this one. Look, I hadn't had any work done on it and it won't go together. It's too thick. Okay, so there we are. Just one more thing. I'm going to get my little tea hoo and suck up all this mess. You haven't seen one of these before. This is a tea hoo. It's a desk vacuum. You get it on Amazon. There is one that looks very similar. This is about £10. There's one that looks very similar for about £6. I wouldn't touch it. Um, I got one, it didn't even work. So just get the ten pound one. Um, undercarriage sits in these bulkheads. Where do we do the undercarriage? Should have marked the page, shouldn't I? There we go. So that's the nose gear. And then we start on the main gear, and we can see we're gluing halves together. What I'd like to know is I have heard that the undercarriage is not capable of carrying the weight of the aircraft. I'd like to know please if someone can tell me that's built this, perhaps if, um, what's his name, Tim, Timothy Borland Scott, Timothy Scott Borland, if he's watching he can tell me. I'd like to know where it breaks. Does it break where it glues into the fuselage or, or do the actual undercarriage legs themselves break or do the axles break off on the wheels? If somebody could let me know, I'd be grateful, because then if I know where it breaks, I could come up with a fix. Okay, so uh, watch this space. So I'm going to call that a day for this part. This is not necessarily a build. This is a, it's a nightmare of a kit that a lot of people have got, and because it's so cheap, and a lot of people are telling me it's a complete utter dog. Um, I actually like dogs, as long as they're not as bad as that bloody Mac 2 VC10 I had. Um, I enjoy them, but something that will go together with some manipulation I think is a lot more fun than something just forced together. So that's why I'm doing this and it's just alongside the Lancaster and the Stug. So um, thanks for watching. Uh, please come back for part two. I don't know when that's going to be. Maybe next Thursday. And uh, I'll see you then. I don't know if I'm going to put this out as a premiere. I think I might do. And uh, we'll go from there. So um, thanks for watching. And as I say, if you could let me know about the undercarriage, I'd be very, very grateful. And what we're going to do in the meantime, we're going to let this dry, get this sanded out, and then we'll look at how I'm going to paint these. Uh, it's always a nightmare. A lot of people pour paint down in there. I don't like doing that. I'm going to try and spray them. We shall see. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye for now.